All right, y'all. Today we're gonna go out and check some of our fiddlehead spots from the last 10 days or so ago. We'll see how far along they are. Hopefully today we can find our first pheasant back mushrooms of the year. That'd be the first edible mushroom up here in Maine that I can find. We'll see what we can find along the way. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, one of the interesting things you'll notice about ostrich fern is like this whole area here, this whole little low spot all down there was all ostrich fern. I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago. And in the past seven years, it has changed over to different style ferns. And there's just a couple ostrich. You can actually see like there, there's another little clump back over there. But you'll notice you come back to the same area, it will change over time. So don't be surprised if your ostrich fern patch ends up disappearing or moving. And you have to search a new spot to be able to find the same the same amount because it actually does it migrates all over the place but yeah this whole area was all fiddlehead ferns and now it's not I, like, a lot of people think chaga is rare and especially here in maine it is not rare there's the trail and a lot of people will be walking right down the trail and would not realize that up this big huge steep hill that on the back side this is where chaga is, or this chaga is, on the back side, and you'd never notice it down there, and unless you walked all the way around the whole tree, and it's a tiny tree. But that's why you got to check all the way around the whole tree. You didn't realize a lot of times it is just on the back side. You just don't even realize that is there. Yeah, and these are tiny, little itty bitty, but it's a small tree, but no. So, that's part of it. If you're gonna be looking for chaga and you see birch, don't be surprised when you're missing it just because you're not, it is completely on the back side. All right, there's that Exedia Not even sure if I'm saying it right, but that's that other Exedia. It's actually pretty cool. Little jelly. Yeah, little jelly. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so when you're down in these low-lying areas and you're here looking for the beginning of the year mushrooms like pheasant back, what I look for is something like that dead elm over there. And actually, I'm pretty sure I can see... Yep. Alright, I really only harvest these when it's very, very young. Ooh, this is a wet area. And it's very young. Yep, those are... So those are pheasant backs. And you only harvest them young because when they get old, they become really tough. But yep. That's neat. That's a little pig snout. They call it a pig snout. And that is your pheasant back. That would be my first edible mushroom of the year. And it's pretty good. When you get it really young, it's really, it really tastes, it tastes phenomenal when it's really young, just as soon as it starts getting. These caps open up, and as soon as you can see a pour underneath, as soon as you can see a pour on the bottom, they're done. But these are, realistic. I know they're tiny, but they're perfect. That's perfect size. You get them much bigger than that, and they aren't edible. All right, so I'm just gonna take my bag, put it down below it and show you. So you really just wanna take it and kinda snip it off. Yeah, I know it's tiny. I know it's tiny, but they're tasty. We'll find some more. Yeah, it should be soft. If it's hard to cut through. Yeah, there it is. That's pheasant bag. It looks pretty gnarly. That's tasty.
Chaga grows from everywhere on the tree. Here's some root. And that's chaga right there. More chaga. That's funny. And it's on this root of the tree all the way up there. Oh. Let's see, they grow out. They grow in any opening. Not any opening. Well, I can find old mushrooms. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Itty bitty. <laughs> yeah. Look at the color on that thing. What a little bitty. And then right next to it, this is a horsetail. Now the only thing I use this for is for lice for my children. It works really good if you just boil it 10, 15 minutes. It ends up turning like a pink water. And then you use it for like an after wash after the shower. After you're done showering, you just pour it in your head. And the silica that's in it causes the hair to be so smooth that I swear the lice cannot stick. They just, I have never found a live lice. Uh, I've never actually found the lice in the hair. I don't, after Afterwards, it's only been um, the eggs that I just have to take out. So that is actually for kids, one of the most important things to learn. And I even think for hair, if I had hair, <laughs> other than on my chin, this really makes it smooth because of the silica. You can use it to clean your pans from that fire burn. And now it's actually pretty cool. So that's the first one this year I've seen. And as you can see, it's segmented and hollow. Yeah, but that's horsetail. And it does. It's got a lot of silica in it. Alright, that is not a dog tick. That is most definitely a deer tick. Oh, and I dropped it. You mother... Alright, here's a very evasive knotweed. This looks rhubarby. Yeah, and this is what the knotweed looks like. Full grown, old, and it does. It takes up a whole corner. It takes up all whole areas, very evasive. Yeah, looks almost like bamboo. Yeah. Looks almost like almost like bamboo. See it's hollow. Yeah, Japanese knotweed. Up high here. It's a little further along, but it'll still be a week out. Now in a week I hope to be able to come and fill an order. Because next Thursday I'm actually driving down to Tennessee. I'm going to be doing some foraging on the way back and hopefully I can find some of my first larger mushroom finds of the year. I'm not sure what will be there but probably going and staying in Virginia on the night after working my way back. But yeah, I'm just going to get a little bit today for myself because up here it's good. It's nice too. Yeah, up here they're a little further along but realistically all down there all that that's all gonna be yeah all, all back in there that's gonna be next week and I have a 
couple pound order. I don't usually sell these because I do not sell anything for less than ten dollars a pound. So I'm just going to do a specialty order along with some of my microgreens for next week. But I do want to eat some of these tonight. That little tiny bit of pheasant back. Yeah, these are tiny. Again, I'm just snatching some for myself, so. Yeah, these are really tiny. Usually, usually you want the stems longer than that. Something like this. Maybe not that much. Yeah, something like this. Yeah, a little more, a little more normal size. If I can find them at least like that, that's that's where I would pick them to sell, bare minimum. The other ones that I picked were definitely just for myself. Just I want to make sure I get some food tonight. Yeah, as you see, they grow in this little bundle. And it has this one, another one, another one, little one down in there. They just keep, as the biggest one goes up, the smallest one comes behind it. It's actually really interesting. Yeah, it's a little clump. It's gorgeous. Look at the color on that. Wow. That's crazy. Man, that is beautiful. That is so cool. Look how those grow. Out and down and down and down. It is so neat. Down and down and down. That is awesome. Take that home and add that to my collection. That is cool. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. All right, y'all. That's pretty cool. So that's chaga on a tree that broke off. Actually, yeah, it looks like it's been dead for quite a while. I walked through here just a few moments ago. Coming back through, I realized, oh yeah, that's chaga. There's chaga. Chaga all inside that tree there. That's 
pretty cool. Let me see how much actually comes out or shows on the outside. That actually is really neat. Yeah, so on the Chaga, you can see this is what shows on the outside, which is not much. But there, look on the inside of that tree. Look how big that is. That's huge. Down that thing, that is cool. Yeah, it shows you there's really no chaga showing on the outside of that tree whatsoever, except for just little bits. But that little bit, that little bit of chaga right there, is really a massive amount inside the tree. Wow, check that out! That is so cool. Yeah, and this is how those trout lilies grow pretty large patches. As you can see. I was talking about chaga on a rooting structure. And then right now I come across this, which again, chaga grows all over the place. But that's chaga right there, growing right from the roots. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of the craft. Yeah. Just not really finding a whole lot. But I found my path. <laughs> All right. Balance up. No way. Absolutely no way. <gasps> oh my gosh. That is not a morale. But wow. Oh, that is awesome. Alrighty then. I was not expecting that. I just about stepped on it. Wow, yeah, and there's a lot of cherry, a lot of cherry. Actually, I was just looking at a cherry right over there, and that's what, oh, wow. Well, that's cool. Yeah, the season's getting started. Love it. So, yeah, unfortunately, that is a false morale. I did think that I was finding a real morale but now it's my first morale that I found was in June and we we're more than a month out so I'm not really shocked at not finding morale and I didn't find it anywhere near here it was all along the coast pretty far but yeah no that was that was unexpected I really did not expect to see that today yeah it's right here in Augusta Maine near right where I'm doing my fiddle head checking that's cool there's your little falsy. So on this foraging day, I ended up harvesting a little over a pound of fiddleheads. I only got those two small pheasant backs, and I found my first false morale in Augusta. So the season's starting. I hope you all stay tuned.